and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 270. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Will. And coming around the stretch, it's Will. He's coming by half a neck. He's coming. Oh, no, wait. He's only got half a neck. Oh, my gosh. Someone cut him off at the neck. This is horrible. Oh, God. What happened? What happened? Did you play Bloodborne again? No, I just think I got on the wrong side of the French Revolution. <laughs> uh, let them have cake. <laughs> no, no cake for anyone. Uh, cake is a lie. And also joining us is Starstream. By the power of the star, I summon Starstream! <laughs> Yay! How are you doing, man? You need to work on those intros. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> I am terrible at intro. <laughs> uh, we'll work on it. We'll work on it somehow. Uh, yeah, in the future, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Don't worry, uh, Megan. By the afraid. time we're through with you, we'll be sure your intros are always good. <laughs> yeah, look yeah, at how we I do know. it. Cricket, cricket. <laughs> Norman, you don't do anything. I know. <laughs> It's neither good. Well, the intro has always been the same. <laughs> yeah, for uh, 270 episodes. Oh, this is a 270th episode, by the way. So it's like, wow, we are at that junction where we have recorded this for a while now. Hmm, only 30 more weeks and we'll have the 300th episode. And you know what that means? Spartan references. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, I wait that day. <laughs> oh, I wait that day. Oh, that day is going to be fun. Uh, but, 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 anywho, let's hop right into it, guys. Um, this week's news, there's a lot, so let's get right into it. Last week, we mentioned about the My Little Pony movie trailer being out with Despicable Me. And, funny story, I went to the theaters, but I didn't watch Despicable Me 3. So, and... Good on you. <laughs> well, it, technically, um, IMDB said that Despicable Me 3 got... 95. Uh, I'll explain what I watched later near the end, just because that's mm-hmm. my week. But anywho, um, Pony, the Pony trailer is out, and it seems that it's pretty cool. And a lot of people, from what I heard, said that the ponies look strange. But still, the trailer is out. It's out there on the YouTube, so I mentioned, like, you don't need to go and watch Despicable Me 3 to watch the trailers. It's out now. Yeah, no, I it was glorious was gonna, 1080p. Yep. Yes. But I was, I was gonna say that I was, I was nearly wanting to go to the cinema, just going to watch the Despicable Me 3, the movie, and then after that, I just came out after I watched the trailer. <laughs> if I do remember right, in the States, um, if you don't like the movie and you're like a few minutes through, you can, um, get your money back. Is that right, Will? That's on a case by case basis, and usually most places they might, but honestly, um, in today's day and age with reviews and other stuff, uh, most people know what they're getting into. It's only people that go into a thing completely blind or with blind assumptions. Mm, all right, so okay, r- r- really, I, I that would have to be something you'd have to ask individual movie theaters. Ah, all right, so in all essence, um, case by case basis, then all right. So anywho, yes, completely. Back onto the movie trailer. It's fun. It's about a minute long, depending on which version you've seen, because there's a German version that added a few seconds of content there. So that's cool too. So what do you guys think about the trailers? Like, what do you think of the ponies in Toon Boom? People have said they think they're weird. I think they look great. The thing is that people are so used to the puppet models, and the thing is. They're used to the rigid movements of a puppet model. These are completely freeform, hand-drawn, um, uh, well, puppets. And because it's in Toon Boom, they're a lot more doughy, mm-hmm. basically. I personally think it's great. Um, there's a lot wider range of emotion. The characters have a lot more poses. Everything's a lot more softer. And the principles of animation are a lot more active in this one. Now, that doesn't mean that the trailer doesn't have problems. Um, the, uh, the airship that the bad guys come on, come in on does look like PS2 graphics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I appreciate them for that. They're willing to go that extra mile just to put some PS2 graphics on. And remember, the PlayStation 2 is the best selling console ever, I think. <laughs> is it? I don't remember. But either way, man, it's, it's, it's a matter of taste for some people, but I love how Canterlot looks. 
um, because we get to see it from both sides and we get uh, basically a 3D rendering of the city. And so many artists have had problems with drawing Canterlot because how is it supposed to look? Well, now we know exactly how this thing is supposed to look, and that is awesome. Yeah, yeah. And also, yeah. Um, if I do remember right, um, EQD has a post up about the things that we miss about the trailer. And for you guys at home who are listening to this, I would suggest go looking for that breakdown because it's a pretty good breakdown. They mention a lot of background ponies, references, things that we miss and whatnot. By the way, um, that scene where Trixie is, Starlight's there too. So that's something I missed on my first watch. Mm-hmm. And that, that set off a whole bunch of people. This <laughs> is like, ah, the Glim Glams is in the movie. She's going to steal the spotlight. It's like, calm down. Oh, talking about calm that, down. didn't we yeah. mention last week where someone asked if Glim Glam, yeah, yeah, it's one in the uh, Reddit AMA, if uh, Glim Glam's going to be there and is she going to be a Mary Sue? And the guy said, no, it's not. No, she said she's not a Mary Sue. Yeah. That's the only thing he answered. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, but still, but still, that's besides the point. Um, Star, what about you? What do you think, man? And I think you have an interesting story about this one for us. Well, in my case, this consider as my fifth trailer. Your to be fifth honest. watch of the trailer, or yeah, my fifth trailer because the I have watched other trailer which w- wasn't allowed to be talked about. And then recently they just mentioned that, oh, we can talk about it a bit, but some of the things I still cannot be told because I was, I went to the Thai Pony Con and then there was a panel. They talk about, uh, they show us, the, oh, the first trailer, which is, you know, the very, very bad one. <laughs> all right. The very confusing one. All right. Yeah. The very confusing with all those stuff. And then, so we were shown two, uh, three more trailers. Well, one of the trailer, which is the first one that I saw, was talking about commentary on how they do the movie, mm. like the voice acting and all these things they show, and that's where they show the the Twilight Sparkle, and I was oh, we was quite surprised. It was so good. Uh, to be honest. Okay, cool. And then what else? We were shown a bit of Cantalon and all these things, and then show this and that. It was nice. And moving on, we showed the second trailer. I think. I shouldn't say the second trailer. It's more like, I should say properly, it's the intro of the movie. Part of the things that we've seen in this trailer, they were actually shown in the intro. Like, for example, the part where Twilight Sparkle was talking about, oh, this is my, I'm Princess Twilight Sparkle, and talking about how she is the princess of friendship, that is actually in the intro movie. The intro part where... But you gotta remember, it's all in... Oh, sorry. And when they show the four panels, they're talking about each of the princesses, yeah. which represent what by yeah, it, what it's job they technically they were, for those who just entered the theater blind, got no idea what they're doing. Like I only get here because my little niece wants to watch the movie. Oh, the horror! <laughs> but one thing was funny um, was the fact that Cadence was known as the princess of. That's not a word. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They they say that she represents. That's Word? Something like that. Are you are you uh, sure you meant to share this with us, man? Like, are you sure? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did ask. Okay, okay. You know what? Just to be safe, just to be safe, I'm gonna bleep it out. So you guys at home who's hearing this after I after Sweetie Bot edit this, you're gonna hear the princess of what now? <laughs> yeah, I gotta say that I was kind of I was kind of hoping they'd um do uh. Well, I, yeah. I haven't seen the second trailer you guys are talking about, but I'm uh, hoping the princesses don't just get shuffled <laughs> off. Um, uh, well, in all honesty, Will, I haven't seen the trailers that um, Star here has seen because I didn't went to TaiponiCon. Um, this was a TaiponiCon exclusive. So, yeah, good on them who went. For me, I'm with you. Like, I'm blind. Like, I, I got no idea. Anyway, this is an interesting movie. Like, um, from the trailers that we've seen, it's pretty good. And by the way, um, Wills, what did you mention before? Like, what do you want to say before? Oh, uh, yeah. At first, I thought he was talking about the uh, secondary trailer that appeared in German, uh, that just had like a few extra, you know, yeah, seconds yeah. of footage. But no, no, I, I realized oh, wait, he's talking about the exclusive one. Yeah. To, to which then I was just gonna say. Yeah, but you gotta keep in mind, everything in the second trailer was all German, so it's like, I seen Frank Fonsip to the Twilight Sparkle! Nein, nein, nein! But anywho, uh, anywho, talk, talking about new things, uh, like with this movie, we got a new poster, by the way. Uh, th- the poster here looks better than what we got, but as a graphic student, I don't think this is good. <laughs> 
And also, it's just that, why is there so much glitter? The glitter part, I accept it by now. You know what? I've already accepted the glitter, but I just can't accept this poster. But before I go into my tirade of design, Wills, what do you think, man? About the poster? It's a poster. If you want me to do artistic critiquing, I, I guess I could try, but I'm going to have to become a snob for a moment. <laughs> As we can see, apparently somebody just likes lens flares when it comes to this sort of thing. I mean, God, they're everywhere. But as for the colors and the saturation, good God, did someone just turn up the hues entirely? And as for the background characters, why even put them in there? I mean, plus, what's the what's the point of even putting all the names at the top if those are just the special guest stars? They're not the main characters; they're just guest stars. Where's the where's the correlation towards Tara Strong and Andrew Libman and all the other voice actors who do the main characters? Do they get credit? No, they're put down in the tiny text. <laughs> And so we get to know about Emily Blunt and all these other people who basically are going to be in there for a couple scenes. whippity doo da. I have to agree with that, too. Now, as for the fact, there's just glitter everywhere. What is this done by? An arts and crafts project? <laughs> this is like the sort of poster that was done by Jim, and we know how that turned oh, out. Oh, God. Oh, God. But, anywho. Uh... So, as it comes down to it, I'm going to have to give this poster a glitter out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> glitter out of ten. Nice. Uh... Star, what about you, man? What do you think about this poster? Well, I have to agree what Will said, but uh, one thing nice about this poster, I imagine that when you, if you buy the poster or something, and then you pin it up, and the next thing you know is that you don't need nightlight anymore. <laughs> because <laughs> you just see that very, very nice glitter. Yeah. The poster's too oh, bright. Wow. The poster's too bright. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need to put a curtain over it. <laughs> yeah, it's so bright that you still need to wear sunglasses even in the dark. Oh, God. All right. As for me about this poster, like I mentioned before, I accepted the glitter. The glitter is part of the movie poster thingy or promotion logo, whatever they want to call it. But in all honesty, I do not like how they drop shadow this. They they use shadowing effect, I can tell, because, well, in all essence, the light source is coming from the back, so... There's a lot of shadows going to be developed or going to appear at the front of the characters. And this here is the biggest problem that I had with the previous poster, where why does everything look dark? Why does everything look grim or very, what you might call this, not bright? And I don't mean bright as in the colors or whatever. I mean, the colors here are there, but they look muted. Because of how dark everything looks. Except for the special guest characters, which we'll mention before. Like, they're covered up by the main stars. Like, why even put them there if they're not going to be there? Like, at least you could make them bigger or something. I mean, I... Oh, wait, no. Uh, Norman, that's what it's supposed to be? All this time we thought it's about the uh, guest voice actors, but no. Emily Blunt is Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> Christian Kenneth is Fluttershy, <laughs> Liv Schreber is Rarity, and Sia is now voicing Spike. Wow. You know what? Okay, I buy that. You know what? <laughs> okay, movie poster eleven about eleven out of pineapple. And of course, and of course, and of course, Tay Diggs is now voicing Rainbow Dash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but in all honesty. They could have done better. Like, this poster has been done by a professional. And <laughs> I don't know who okayed this. I, I I ain't no professional, but I've seen a lot of movie posters during my time. And I can tell which one is good, which one is bad. Uh, but talking about which one is which one is good, which one is bad, the movie length is about 99 minutes long. That translates to about an hour and 40 plus minutes. So that's good. Hour and... Hour and 39. Hour 39? Is it? I think so. You're no probably, mistaken. probably. But still, um, hour and a half. Yeah, hour and 39. Hour, yeah, hour, hour and a half. That's not bad. That's not bad. So, what do you think? Like, is it enough? Too long? Wills? I think that's great. Um, more animation is always great for me. I mean, heck, I was kind of worried this was only going to be like, um, you know, a 70 minute movie or something, you know, barely breaching an hour. Really? But um, animated movies have done that before. Um, example? Like, I, I thought, like, movies were supposed to be, well, an hour, like, uh, okay. Oh, well, an hour and, like, five minutes. Or something. I, I've seen ones that are shorter than an hour, even. But, um, no, I'm just glad that, uh, I mean, what was what was one I was thinking of? Uh, Google do your <laughs> stuff. Well, I did check about something, and it's 
10 minutes shorter than Zootopia. Really? No. Well, at least that's yeah, nice. Yeah. Zootopia is an hour 50 minutes. So this is 10 minutes yeah. shorter. Okay, so it's going to be about an, an hour and 30-ish minutes. So, um, 39. Yeah, that, that is that is a decent... That is about an average runtime for like Disney animated movies. All right, all right. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. I think, how long was Shrek? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we even mentioning him? <laughs> that was actually about the same length too. Okay, what's a dumb movie that I can think of? Ah, Kung Pao. Hey, aha, hoodwinked. That was done in a, an hour and fifteen minutes. Oh wow, all right, but still, but still, um, ninety nine minutes is not bad. Like, um, an hour and what is it, thirty nine? Let's just say hour forty. So hour forty, yeah. it's not bad. Like, so it's. So three episodes basically. True. Actually, actually, technically, um, if we're gonna actually no, it's like four episodes. Because you got to remember, um, most episodes are like twenty minutes long, maybe nineteen if you mm, remove nah, repeating the, stuff or whatnot. The full episode without ads is twenty-two minutes long. If you remove the intro, twenty. So still. So it's at least okay. close to four to five episodes then. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, basically you can watch the opener and enders. Not bad. So, uh, Star, what about you? I can't wait, to be honest. 99 minutes is, is good. So, 99 is enough for you then? Alright. Yeah. Uh, well, if they if they don't rush and then they slowly cover up <laughs> everything. This is, this is My Little Pony. The ending is going to be rushed. <laughs> it's to be expected. I hope. <laughs> I hope it's not gonna be rushed. Yeah, same here. I hope not, but I'm expecting it to be rushed because it's the My Little Pony tradition. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, did they say how many songs was in the movie uh, again? Seven, right? I think it was seven to five, probably. I, I don't remember. Five to seven. So <clears throat> if you from there, you minus out the songs, that would be less than about. They just say ten minutes. So the movie is gonna be about one. An hour thirty, one still not bad. One hour, yeah. One hour thirty, yeah. not bad, not bad. But still, um, you mentioned before, um, start that there's a what you call this, um, behind the scene or commentary on the whole movie at the con, right? Yep. Well, it seems that uh, the people that are doing Hascon, they have their own shindig too with the whole. Yes. Um, My Little Pony, the, the making of the movie, like they're gonna hold it at their con and talk about it over there and do a lot of pony stuff there. Uh, for example, is like the voices of My Little Pony, Friendship's Magic, uh, design Q&A, and also first look at season eight, and then more voices, and then another season eight thing and stuff. Even the movie Sneak Peek is gonna be there too. So yay! Mm. I wonder what ki- what kind of sneak peek is like. You pay two hundred for the sneak peek. <laughs> I, t- I think it's the first fifteen minutes. That's what they do, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, now they usually just pick a, a scene that is completely complete and uh, shows off enough of the movie that would entice people. You usually don't want to show the intro because um, an intro usually has time to set up an entire thing. With previews, they usually like to show something that's more in the middle. Mm, so get a lot of action then. All right, all right. But still, something with action, something with comedy, just something that that gives them a taste of the middle of the movie, basically. Mm. Heck, maybe even show a scene from something else. Like I don't know. My, my guess is the preview probably will be something of the underground sea world that they have to go into. Yeah, probably. That's been all over the place. And sea ponies, they're back. <laughs> we forget to mention that, but they're back. Oh no! <laughs> uh, but still, for people who are going to attend Hascon, I hope they enjoy themselves because it seems like a fun con to go to. But the problem is, it's so expensive. I wonder how many people were willing to pay that just to watch the sneak peek. Oh, that's the golden ticket, if I remember right. Oh. Yeah, you, you still need you still need to buy the general ticket, then you buy the. Extra add-on is like... Uh, oh, wow. Like, sure. With that price, ugh, that's just too expensive. Too expensive for my blood. Ay, ay, ay. But still, but still. Then again, then again, at least... At least I wonder, is it... 
both the hall of our family dinner is together with the sneak peek. I think it should be for that price. Come on. Yeah, your is two hundred bucks will be a bit too much. Well, but this is per person at the same time too. So if you have a family of four adults, ha ha ha! Good luck. Yeah, but one thing I do wonder though. We still haven't finished season seven, and yet they already show season. Oh eight. no, that's just a sneak peek. But the what you call this? <laughs> yeah, it'll probably be like a uh, an animatic storyboard. Yeah, they've done that before. And what I mentioned before, um, yeah, season eight has been announced, so it's not really a surprise. Like the show's good. Uh, there's a lot of fan backing, one thing more. So that's what they're doing. And let's head on to the next news um we're out of the movies but we're in kind of a special so ishiro del the director for the equestria girl line movies recently posted a tweet saying fun fact equestria girls the dance magic script re- was written before legend of everfree and they had to do some last minute change in order in deliver order like something like that so it seems that Dance Magic was out before um, Dance Magic was done. Sorry, uh, before Legend of Every was done. No, what happened was that Dance Magic script was written before Legend of Everfree was made. Um, basically, it was like a script that was written and ready to be used, but then uh, when uh, good old Legend of Everfree happened, they were like, oh, okay, uh, we gotta just adjust some stuff so, you know, it'll fit in and bada boom ah, now that makes sense so essentially what dance magic was is supposed to be some kind of in between for the equestria games because dance magic's music was in equestria games it's why they still have the Camelot high characters is because you know they're fresh in the minds but then uh legend of every happened so they just had to adjust some stuff so it's like oh yeah time has passed they can't act like it just happened sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, and it makes sense because of how they mentioned that, okay, they need money to uh, repair the camp. But beforehand, it could be um, collect money to get something for the fall formal or whatsoever. So, yeah, oh no, uh, repairing the statue. My question is, how many freaking things does the school do? I mean, it's just like, <laughs> okay, we have... Uh, we have a full formal, and then we have this uh, battle of the bands, and then we'll have this competition that we have every four years, which is the school Olympics, and then we'll take everyone on some sort of summer camp uh, trip. It's like, what kind of school is this? I don't know. <laughs> and how can and, and the thing is, less than a year has passed. This is all within one school year. It's like, is there time for studying? <laughs> is there, do people study math? Is there mathematics going on here? No, probably they, stu- they study a lot of dancing. <laughs> and I don't mean what Rainbow Dash does with the what does with the football stars under the bleachers. Oh no, you no. <laughs> that's, a, that's a different kind of a, of a multiplication that we don't need to discuss. No, no, bat wheel, bat wheel. <laughs> uh, but 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 I do find it. <laughs> but I do find it fascinating with how. TV shows are made. Like, this few facts here, it's just fun. It's just fun. And on the last bit of news, so, we we here tend to talk about pony merch a bit. And, yeah, we, we all like the merch, don't we? Yeah, some of it. Yeah, yeah, some of it, so on. But it seems that um, Hasbro decided to give us a big, uh, in their words, Mega Mystery Power Box! Yeah! So, it, it seems that Toys R Us are having this mystery box thingy, and it seems that the cost is going to be $25. Um, inside is going to be one uh, My Little Pony CCG team deck, I'm thinking, one tin or collector's box, two micro comics, four mystery packs, uh, quote-unquote blind bags, probably, and more. And the more part is, I'm not sure, because... In the picture there, they show um, Derpy, the Funko Vinyl Derpy. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting if you get that. But the thing is, it would just be kind of very sad. It's just like, you get one of these, and you open it up. What's inside the mystery box? Hey. <laughs> oh, wow. It's just a box of hey. Oh, wow. That's not fun. 
<laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> but no, no. But at least one thing I can say though, it won't be cheap for us. Oh yeah, don't, don't, don't count us in on this. Come on. But in all honesty, this is remind me of services like Loot Crate or Loot Box. Loot Crate, yeah, Loot Crate's one. Or Loot Anime or whatever it is. Like those loot services, you know? Yep. And... At least this is what you call official loot. Yeah, but loot still, the, I, I don't know. This is one of those things where it's an interesting concept, but for people who are really into the ponies, we almost have everything, and is it even worth the 25 bucks? Mm. Maybe for those who started to collect. Mm. Wills, what about you? What do you think? Like, you're the local American there, and what do you think of this thing? Like, is it worth it for you? Not, not for me because you know I'm more specific about the stuff that I like. I, I'd rather get something very specific and just pay for that rather than leave it to random chance. Because, well, I just I'm not that much of a merch fan personally. Hmm. However, for me, I mean, it's still gonna be better than the loot crates from Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know that, dude. I swear, if I get another Twilight Sparkle voice line. <laughs> Uh, I heard that Blizzard's gonna fix the duplication thingy, so we'll get less dupes, so that's good. Yeah, well, still, it'd just be like, uh, kid opens his loot box. Yeah, aww, not another rarity. <laughs> We've got 30 of those. <laughs> I do wanna say though, will it be just like the blind bags where they have the, uh, what you call it, secret code for it, so <laughs> that no, we can recognize. There's no point in a secret code if you already own the dang thing. <laughs> well, that's true, but for people who don't collect it and they want to, like, what you call it, one shot, get everything, well, this is one way to do it. No! Right? If you want to go sh- get one shot, get everything, you should buy the buying back box. You get everything. Yeah, that is true, but if in the event that you get something, like, well, the box costs 25 US dollar, and if we're saying there's something inside that value more than 25, yeah. like we're saying the Funko figures, at least they would get back the value. Probably, but if it ain't no Princess Luna, then nah. Like, a Princess Luna vinyl figure from Funko is gonna run you around 100 to 200 dollars. So, yeah, those things are rare. But there's also the fact that there's comics, which, if, it says, yeah, you, be interesting though with the comics the comics are the Just micro the ones the small variant of the pony comics like um, I'm not 100% sure how the sizing of a normal comic book is but it's a smaller version of that but there's also card yeah, yeah card still the, the, the problem here is when it comes to the box here or the mystery box it's one of those services like I mentioned Loot Crate or so on it's the money for value. You're paying an upfront cash, in this case $25, to get something that is unknown. With Loot Crate, they have a team, like probably, uh, if I do remember right, it's Transform. So they put things like Transformers, like they list down what you'll be getting. Like there's even exclusive, like um, exclusive Loot Crate t-shirts that they show what you'll get. Um, a few things here and there, and I'm, I'm no Loot Crate subscriber, but I do know a few of my favorite YouTube channels that get sponsored by them. So that's cool. But still, it's what you get money back. Like, is there anything inside the box that's that you cannot get anywhere else? Like, Will here even mention that he's a very specific buyer. So he'll buy something that's specific to his taste. So I'm guessing if a loot crate has a t-shirt that he really wants, he'll probably buy it. Isn't that right, Will? No, no? I'll buy the shirt. Oh. Because I doubt it's going to be in my size. <laughs> no, <laughs> you do know that Loot Crate has said things, right? Like um, things that oh, you you subscribe to us, you get size shirt, what shirt you want, and so on. Uh, I doubt they have an, enough to state my ego. Then it's like sh- shirt size based on ego. <laughs> well, you might as well get a blimp at this point. <laughs> oh, you. But anywho, that's the news for this week. So. Let's head on to the next topic. And next topic is what have we been doing with our week? And Wills, let's start off with you, man. Well, I uh, have officially gotten a stable work schedule. I've um, been working and just coming home and sleeping and just taking it easy mostly, man. I mean, aside from doing a little bit of payday, that's that's about it. Oh, really <laughs> now? I mean, work has... So wait, your work schedule stable now? Like, your one of the people that they trust and so on? 
Uh, well, I mean, I've always had work days, but I mean, I have consistent work days uh, now. Like I'm working, um, I'm, I'm basically working the, uh, the weekend shift. I work tonight and then I'm done until next Wednesday. Uh, so, and you mentioned something about PD. So how's that treating you? Uh, uh, considering I was able to find a new build that makes me, uh, uh, here's the cool thing, Norman. I have found a bit. I found a build thanks to someone else suggesting it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm able to take out dozers with one clip, and uh, I basically can wear a suit, and I'm barely taking any damage. And what difficulty are you playing it on? Death Wish or above? Oh wow! Really now? Yes, it is. It is a beautiful, beautiful build. Okay, basically, all you gotta do, um, is have your concealment as low as possible. Not only will this lower enemies targeting you on average, I mean, you'll still get hit, but you'll at least get enough of a chance to, you know, then duck for cover immediately. Basically, because your concealment is so low, you will have an extremely high crit rate, and your accuracy with the silenced shotgun, if you're... You're able to basically headshot people with a silenced shotgun because you selected a certain type of slug that isn't a buckshot but an actual slug. <laughs> so you're firing just one gigantic fat bullet. <laughs> oh, and you use the auto fire, so you're firing <laughs> boo, 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 boo. You only have eight shots, but that rapid fire, that fast critting, <laughs> takes down a dozer like no one's business. Oh, wow. I think I know the oh, build wow. you're running. It could be a dodge, uh, shot, dodge, um, shot crit dodge built. Basically, oh, and uh, anarchist. Oh, anarchist. Ooh, oh. that's. Oof. Okay. Wow. Uh, um, I, I, since I've been doing that, I've been going really good, and uh, it, it's uh, I, I really like the guy, the guy who suggested it to me. It, it, it makes the game. I mean, you still got to worry about being when you do get hit. You know, you just got to wait a second and uh, get a bit of cover. But the cool part is, is that when your armor breaks, um, you got two seconds of invulnerability. And then it has to reset after 15 seconds. But that two seconds can be enough to completely reposition yourself. And considering you have the highest mobility at that moment, it's like... And the cool part is if you add that on top of uh, your movement speed increasing when your armor breaks, yeah, yeah. it's basically like two seconds of, gotta go fast! <laughs> Can't hit me! Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right, all right. Well, it seems that you've been doing a lot better than what I have because I don't dare to play on Death Wish. <laughs> oh, you got to get the levels, man. Uh, true that, true that. Did you get a hacker, though? Oh, yeah, th- those are prevalent. So what happened? The guy had no clip on, obviously. He was pulling crap like that. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, what happened was we were on the map, uh, the map where you have to cook meth. Oh, God. On the hardest oh. difficulty possible. Well, I think it's like one down. Yes, that's one down. One down. The thing is, I knew he was a hacker when I'm like, here come the police. And I'm like, oh, crap, I've never seen him use that stuff before. And then I hear a hail of gunfire. I'm like, does the guy have an LMG or something? No. He set up on the roof on both sides, 30 on each side sentry guns. (laughs) 60 total sentry guns on the roof. (laughs) Just, they they couldn't even get out of spawn. They, They were just dead the second they walked out. Fun fact for you guys at home who don't know, the maximum amount of turrets or sentries that you can bring is six. Um, just so you know, every one of them was just like, he, he didn't have to reload, they didn't reload, they, they just were there. It was just like, oh, and by the way, I've turned auto-cooking on. I'm like, what's auto-cooking? Auto-cooking! You don't even have to put anything in the thing, it was just going. I'm just like, oh, okay, what? this isn't even fun to play, I guess I'll look for the packages. And then he finds all of them, then we have enough to leave, and then it's like, okay, great, so we beat this, let's just go. And then, then, to top it off, I'm like, okay, so, you know, we get a bet from this. No, the guy has hacked it so that when you picked, when you pick up a carryable item, you technically pick up 50 of that carryable <laughs> item. So he threw in around 300 bags worth of methamphetamine into the back of the truck. And his character was just spamming it like, here! I'm just like, he's, he's the max level of infamy, and I'm just like, I basically just told him off and reported him. I'm just like, you don't make this game fun at all. Screw you. 
Well, technically, that was fun. I mean, uh, how do I put this? When you're at... You can call it fu- you can call it funny, but the thing is, I just don't like that, all right? I- I'm here to actually, for a challenge, and actually play the game. I'm not here to sit around and look as you be a script kitty. Ooh, look at you. You are so grand. You got some code. Real powerful. It doesn't show talent. It shows laziness. Oh, true, but he- look at where he is now. Like, he's the max level in Fumi 25. Ooh, max level that he didn't earn. He has no he has no talent whatsoever. Yeah, well, it, it depends really. I mean, I don't mind it because PD2 is a game versus bots, so eh. The thing is, I'd rather have people like that cordoned off from the main game. I'd just rather have them modding and doing that crap on personal servers, not on public servers. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. What, what you do with your own game in your own time is fine. But when you're ruining other people's fun because of it, then there's no point. Uh, true, but sometimes it's easy to get the achievements and whatnot. Yeah, but hey, I, 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 I wonder though, uh, who was the host at that time? Was he? Was the hacker? Was the host? Yeah, he was the host. I'm no wonder. Uh, well, then you jump into his game, then like, eh. Well, but that's that's besides the point. That's besides the point. I don't mind. I don't mind people who've modded it so that it does some things a little bit different. Like if you've. Like it um, increases the amount of pages you can answer, or if it like um, improves the map layout, or it just uh, gives you a few extra things to play the game. That's fine, but something that just literally makes it nothing. Like, why even play, uh-huh. right? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Still, still, it's one of those things where eh, you you deal like you delete your way, I delete my way, kind of thing. But um, yeah. how are you liking the game? Like I've been talking about it for a while now and I clearly enjoy it. But what about you, man? Oh, I love it. it. It's fun. It's fun to just play a match or two and go back to doing something else. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those pick up and play game, especially when you get a build ID in your head. Mm-hmm. Though I have had it where it's been randomly crashing on uh, me for no reason. Well, that's payday. <laughs> no, I, I just mean it just it just quits to desktop. No, I know. That's payday. What? what? That's payday. Yep. Oh, the worst part is when that happened. That. When, when that happened, when we were doing the the World Bank <laughs> case, and it crashed four times throughout the entire heist, and then I finally joined it and whatnot, and then that was during a crime spree, and I had to end my crime spree because I DC'd during it, so I had to end my crime spree in order to continue playing with them. Oh wow, that sucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah but but still, you're having fun. That's good. So, Star, what about you? What have you been doing this week? Well, one thing I should say, though, to other listeners out there, uh, Salam Hari Raya. So, for my case, uh, because I don't celebrate, I we just have a long week off. So, it was like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was off day for us because the Hari Raya was three days. So, I just stay at home, do nothing <laughs> at most. <laughs> just gaming and all this because, well, thanks to the Steam Summer oh, sales yeah. and because I'm in the, what do you call it, the region, and I kind of uh, have a bit of a, what do you call it, a uh, money butterfly just around my Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that too. Uh, still, the, that was, that was <laughs> the, the holiday was pretty awesome too. But anyway, so as for me, well, I alluded earlier on, I watched a movie, and Will, Thank you for the recommendation. Probably not. That's more on Twilight's case. So, I've watched Transformers. Which one? The fifth one, the new one, in theaters. Okay, that's Twilight's fault, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> yep. So, anywho, uh, how do I put this? Like, I don't want to spoil anything for the movie, year-end movie review that we'll be doing. But let's just say this. For you guys at home who are wondering if you should go watch this or not, I say go watch Despicable Me 3 because earlier I mentioned that it got a 95 on Rotten Tomato and Transformers got 15. So you can decide from there. Yeah, <laughs> go decide. Did I just hear that you mentioned 15? Yes, 1-5. Wow, that's really, really low. Yeah. Oh, fun fact, the mummy that Tom Cruise is in, 15 also. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, that's at least a better mummy than the one that's in the theaters right now. Gag me. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that mummy that Tom Cruise is in, 15%. Oh, no, sorry. I meant the one, uh, no, 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 no. That mummy is bad. <laughs> 
the mummy that was in Bre- that Brendan Fraser was. Oh, in. that was that good. was awesome. I, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, but still, but still, actually, uh, it's just a shame there wasn't a joke in there about Brendan Fraser. That just would that that would have been funny. Yeah, it would bump it up to twenty. <laughs> Actually, it's just been funny if the character had to swing from something and someone said, who do you think you are, George of the Jungle? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, they will bump it up to 2%. Oh, still. <laughs> we didn't get those. <laughs> we didn't get those. But, but, but still, um, besides um, Transformers, I've also been replaying Batman Arkham because of the Steam Summer Sales. Games are stupid cheap. So I bought Bar- Batman Arkham Asylum, played through that. And then uh, I recently bought um, Arkham City, so I'll be playing that one soon enough and see. I mean, I've played them before, I highly enjoyed them, but now with the Game of the Year edition and cheap, so uh, having more fun than I should be, yay. So, anywho, uh, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and my personal Twitter is at Norman Sanzo. Wills, where can the good people find you? Well, if you want to find my uh, art, you can find me at Wills and uh, DeviantArt.com. If you want to find my writings, you can find me at filmfiction.net slash W-I-L underscore I underscore Z-I-N. If you want to find uh, what I'm tweeting about, you can find me on Twitter at WillisN. All righty then. And Star? People can find me on my DeviantArt and Jellicore XX, uh, where I post pictures of my plushies. Alrighty then. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyWoodLife.com. Links will be in the show notes. And also we have the MBA Show Review and Discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, we do the whole review thing, like we do pony episodes, comics, and movies. And also, we do other talks too, like some other comics, series of te- television, or even movies. Yeah, we, we tend to go cycle around that. And sometimes we do have the discussion. Uh, one of the first discussion I think we did was something to do with Starlight and how OP she is and whatnot, and what entails for her coming the next season, which was seven at the time. And yeah, I mean, it was an interesting talk, but I don't know if that still holds water or not, or have our opinions changed. But still, that's something for you guys to go and listen there. And if you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. So over there, you can support us and you'll get access to deleted contents and early access to the review show. And sometimes you'll get access to deleted or exclusive content that won't be on iTunes or YouTube. So, it's worth something. Yay! Yes, exclusive content, like listening to a speaker with each other. Yes, and also that one time when you did something that YouTube didn't like, Wills, remember that one? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> was, was that last week's episode? Yep. <laughs> Uh, really? YouTube didn't like that? Well, YouTube can bite my sh- <laughs> hey. my something or other. It, it can it can bite my knee, Ow. which is going to have trouble with. <laughs> oh, no. Anywho, i like to thank the Patreon supporters. Oh, yeah, if you do also support us on the Patreon, you'll get a thank you. And i like to thank Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Namdragatorius, Starstream, and also myself, Live. Thank you all for the support. You guys have been really awesome. Well, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Will. This is Starstream. And we'll just catch you next week with another fun and, well, less hectic episode of the NBS show? I don't know, maybe... 70, 71. What what seventy one is like? What's the centennial celebration for that one? Yeah, can't promise even that, Norman. You never know what to expect on this show. <laughs> Yay! Uh, anyway, see ya.